I guess I could understand why some people uh, prefer to winterize their campers. I guess if I lived in like North Dakota or something like that and there was just too much snow to take it out anywhere, I'd probably winterize it. But I, I have trouble understanding why that's really imperative with one of these kinds of campers because everything is self-contained. So there are no water lines underneath the camper. Um, just to give you a glimpse inside, got the water tank here and then your water line comes out here in the back. I've got a shutoff valve and then this lead is what people would use to winterize it. That's how they would put uh, antifreeze into the system. And then it comes around, goes through a little filter and then it gets to the water pump. And this line here is just a drain, which I've uh, drained all the water out of my tank for now to test this out. Really, my biggest concern is with the water pump. These things are, uh, th there could be water in here and it could freeze and they'll expand enough. But since the water is drained from it, there's no harm in that. And these plastic fittings are junk. I understand that. But if there's no water in the plastic fittings, I don't see what the harm is in them getting cold enough to freeze. If there was water left in the pump and it froze, then sure, I could understand how that might be an issue. This is really the only component I'm concerned about. And then the water comes from the pump and goes down here along the side. And then goes right inside the camper from there. Now we're inside the camper. You can see the water line coming through the wall there. It comes in, branches off to go to the hot water tank. That's what we've got here. It gets heated up. And then we end up with a hot and a cold line from this point forward. And then we've got the hot and cold coming across here. Branches out to go up to the exterior shower, hot and cold. As well as to the sink, hot and cold. And then it comes across here and goes into this wall, into the bathroom. For cold water to the toilet. And hot and cold for the shower. And then the black drain that comes down the sink here that goes outside. If there's no pressure in any of these lines, and if they're empty of water, and if I keep the taps open to ensure that there's no pressure, I don't understand the logic of filling these up with antifreeze. Even if it gets below freezing here inside the camper, of course all these walls are insulated, but let's just say it gets really cold out and it drops below freezing in here, I see no harm in any of these lines getting down into the 20 degrees. If there's nothing in them, I don't see what the problem is. In the tank, I don't see the harm in that either. There's no pressure in the tanks. And if there's a little bit of water in the black and gray tanks and that freezes, I don't see any harm in that either. There's no mechanics or electronic devices or anything down there. So that seems a bit strange to me. I don't see any reason to fill this stuff up with antifreeze. If all of these lines were under the camper, like some of them are designed, I could see that being a potential concern, but I don't know. It doesn't seem like it makes a lot of sense. So that's the other thing we're going to test here. And I've tested this before. I've just never really documented it. We're going to get down below freezing in a couple of days and we'll see if there's any harm or any leaks or anything caused by these things not being filled with antifreeze. So what we've got here is a thermometer that has um, a sensor for the inside and a sensor for the outside. The thing on the left is what's going to measure the temperature inside by the water tank in that front storage compartment. And the thing on the right is going to be outside to measure what the temperature is outside the camper. This way I'll be able to see what the difference is. All right, it's about 7 a.m. I've got uh, the outside thermometer there. I've got a dog there. Anyways, outside thermometer there. Inside thermometer is inside the storage compartment. And we got 29 degrees outside, 34 degrees inside. So 34 inside, not the freezing. I put this in here just to make sure you could see the water is not frozen. Of course, the tank is empty. All the lines are empty as well. So there's no water in here. But even if there was, uh, we would not be in any jeopardy of freezing. There's a good five degree difference between the outside and the inside. And it's been windy too. It's uh, chilly with the wind. It uh, might have even been a, a greater difference between inside and outside if it wasn't so windy. 
So what does this tell us so far? Is it necessary to winterize the camper? I would say not yet. Um, I could safely be in below 30 degree temperatures. And even though there was no water in the system, I could have had water in the system. It wouldn't have froze. Um, not to mention that I would have had the furnace running inside, which would have even provided more warmth all the way up to the storage compartment. Um, but just to be on the safe side of making that assumption, I'm going to put some water in the tank and pressurize it just to confirm that there's no leaks. All right, water pump is on. Everything's pressurized. Still 30 degrees outside, 34 in this little compartment. And confirm there are no leaks anywhere. Nothing is dripping. All the fittings are fine. No problemo. Ended up turning the furnace on in here because I am freezing doing this. So <laughs> that's what you hear in the background. But inside as well, no leaks. All the fittings are good. Ran the shower, flushed the toilet. No problems at all. If I was spending an extra cold night, let's say dropped like down below zero or something like that, and I wanted to bring some heat to that front storage compartment, obviously if the furnace is running in here, all of the stuff under the sink is going to be fine. But that storage compartment has a door that passes through from the inside, which would allow some of the ambient heat here to make its way to the water tank and water pump and the lines inside there. That means you gotta keep this door open here and maybe not everybody wants to do that. So what is another way to keep everything in the storage compartment warm enough when it's super cold outside? And that way would be with heat cable. So the idea behind this is this cable, whatever it's in contact with is gonna get a small amount of heat when this is plugged in. It just goes to a regular household outlet. Um, it has a thermostat built into the cable so you run it along your pipes or whatever you want and this is what senses the temperature uh, once this uh, reads below 40 degrees it kicks on and provides a gentle amount of heat all throughout this black cable and it stays on until it gets to 50 degrees once it gets to 50 degrees it kicks off so it saves on your electric bill i have a exterior well for my house so this whole place is on well water and the outside pump house um, is heated with this as well. So the, the water lines there stay above freezing thanks to this. It's uh, perfectly safe to use and it works on plastic pipes as well as metal pipes. So my plan with this is to wrap this around the water tank maybe once or twice. Uh, the water lines from the tank around the water pump and then around the water line that goes into the cabin and stop there. Now, like I said before, all that does not have water in it. I keep it empty when it's below freezing. But what if I was camping on a long weekend or something and it got below freezing? I need water on my trip. This would be a way to keep water in the system and keep it above freezing so long as I am plugged in. That means I can't be boondocking in 10 degree weather. I'd have some problems then. But as long as I got electric, then I should be good. So just to kind of illustrate how all this works, I've got an infrared thermometer. So the surface of that wall is 32 degrees. The surface of the sensor, 34 degrees. The actual cable that would be around the stuff, 44 degrees, 43 degrees. And this will stay warm enough, this, that's keeping whatever this is in contact with above freezing until that sensor reads 50 degrees. And it's never going to reach that out here because what it's, it, there's nothing for it to be up against. I mean, it's, the wind's blowing and it's cold. Okay, I think I'm all set. I uh, wrapped the heat cable, started it here, where that little pigtail is. Went around the water pump, around the lines from the water tank uh, to the water pump behind it there. And then it made a whole loop all the way around the back of the tank itself and came back around. Do I expect that heat cable to keep this entire tank from freezing? No way. I mean, if it's sub-zero, that's not going to do much at all. But uh, it will at least help if it's down below, you know, 25 degrees or something outside. I think it'll at least make, it, make an effort. Um, but anyways, this is what's most critical to me, is I don't want water to be in the pump and have the pump freeze and all that expand and bust up the pump. That's the expensive bit right there. 
and I think that'll make a difference. It wraps around it just enough to keep it where it needs to be. And then what I did is that's the the uh, thermostat right there, right on the outlet of the water pump itself. So that's where it'll measure the temperature. And then I just ran an extension cord. It's not pretty, but it doesn't matter. It goes all the way across. And you can see way down on the other side, that's where it goes into the inside of the camper. And then the extension cord comes in through there, passes through the dinette seat, and then goes to that outlet there. So that gives me control when I want to use it or not. It'd be very easy to just tuck it away in here. And then of course, when you put the seat back together, you'll never notice any of that. All right, I got everything put back in place. And what's the verdict? Do you need to winterize your sunlight camper? Well, you might need to, to be honest. It's going to depend on a lot of factors. I'm going to try doing without winterizing this year. Um, as long as I keep the uh, heat cord plugged in when there's water in the lines, and that'll keep everything at a reasonable temperature, I think I'll be safe that way. And when that's not plugged in, just make sure that there is no pressure in the lines. Everything is drained completely. I think I'll be fine. Um, my worry, the only thing I'm concerned about, is really all of these little plastic fittings. These elbows, the plastic fittings on the uh, outlet of the, the water pump, all this kind of stuff. Because I think what's going to happen in the extreme swings of temperature, when it goes down into the 20s, and then I heat things up to the 50s and then down to the 20s. Those things are going to probably contract and expand. They're not meant to experience temperature fluctuations like that. And I'm pretty sure they're going to start to weep. Are they going to crack and split from being frozen? No, no, I don't think that'll be the problem. But I think that there'll be a little bit of drips that come from those. So probably my uh, project for next spring when it warms up again is to replace all of those plastic fittings with normal either shark bite fittings or just proper PEX connectors. You know, stuff that's made out of brass that'll be built to withstand changes in temperature. The stuff you'd have in your house, basically. So that'll probably be my project for next year. But for this winter, I'm going to try it out and see how it goes. Thanks for watching the video.